the, the phone and tablet versions and the web version, um, you know, clearly people would love to see direct integration with Lightroom itself. Um, so hmm. I can say that makes a lot of sense. I can't promise anything, but yeah. um, clearly it's, it's something I personally would love. I mean, all my images are in Lightroom. And I would love to say, oh, you know, just I've got, you know, 10,000 kid pictures, but I know all of them are available on my phone. Mm -hmm. You know, and all of them then I could edit using Photoshop Touch if I happen to have my iPad or my tablet. So we're getting there. Right? We're talking months, not years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the bits, yeah, as you said, the bits are there, I guess. They're kind of yeah. glue and yeah. the thing yeah. carousel and uh, Creative Cloud to tie that together. Right, right. So we're kind of announcing it in, in, in little drips and grabs. So we announced Carousel about a month ago. Now there's Creative Cloud. So you'll see more things rolling out. And then, so the difference between Carousel and Creative Cloud, then, how do they, I mean, they're both kind of cloud sharing and syncing? I mean, yes. I'm told by very smart engineers, all will be resolved. Right. Uh, so so they're two separate things. I mean, do they serve two different purposes, or they kind of? It's part of it is just. Um, I mean, Adobe has some cloud infrastructure already. So we've got Photoshop.com, uh, we've got Acrobat.com, and so I think it's it's not so much by design as it is by you know what's the most efficient to develop right now. So we recognize absolutely it needs to make sense together, and it will. It's just they're they're kind of coming out in little chunks. So hopefully, yeah, like I say, I mean, what I very much expect is okay. I can be in Carousel. I can you know batch apply black and white to 20 images, and then choose one of them and pop it open. Photoshop Touch, do some edits, and pop it back in, just like between Lightroom and Photoshop. Yeah. So, you know, I'm so um, I like to say that if I were to boil uh, Photoshop Touch down to one thing, it's take two images, cut the background off one, and blend them together. So unlike apps like Carousel, which are really single image focused, it has layers, selections, uh, brushing, all those core things from Photoshop that let you do image compositing. So in this case, um, you can see I'm browsing Creative Cloud, uh, but I can also browse uh, Google, Facebook. Um, it's a little bit slow here. Um, just a lot of people on the wireless network right now. Um, but what I'm doing is uh, simply adding one image into another. And so when I place it, I have, just like with Photoshop, the ability to scale it, skew it, warp it, etc. Here I'm going to hit Done. And now I just want to cut the background off. So I'm going to use my stylus, uh, just because it's easier to, to see them with my fingers in the way. And I'm simply going to make a really simple, uh, almost crude mark on the image just to indicate what I want to keep. And then to remove, I'm just going to choose this red tool. And then I'm going to let the computer think about which how it should segment that. And you can see it does you know, a really pretty good job. Now, in some cases, like his hair, uh, it's not quite perfect. So if you want to go further, we've got Refine Edge, which is uh, one of the marquee features from Photoshop CS5. And you've actually got the ability to go in here and um, simply mark on there to say, oh, there's some wispy pieces you didn't quite get. Um, I can refine that, but again, the interface is really, really simple. I can choose OK and let it think about that. And then once I'm done, I'm just going to choose Extract and extract that from the background. So that's the kind of thing that most people wouldn't probably relish doing in Photoshop, um, even with all the precision of, uh, of a mouse and desktop processor. Here you're doing it with even a low power device and your finger. So um, we think that's kind of exciting. It, for us, it's a chance to take a lot of really cool labs technology and not only bring it to pros, but to simplify it and then bring it to anybody who wants to use it. So there was Photoshop.com a while ago that was uh, launched, uh, the online version, Photoshop Express, yeah. Well, so there's Photoshop Express, which has existed before, and uh, so Photoshop Touch is a totally new beast. Um, so Photoshop Express has had, you know, 25 million downloads, something like that, but it's really, really simple. It's just, you know, crop images, apply color, that sort of thing. Um, so Photoshop Touch will be available uh, in November, along with the other Touch apps announced today. Um, that'll be on Android first. There's an iOS version coming. Haven't announced the date. It's partly, you know, contingent on when Apple approves it and so forth. And um, this has cloud storage with it? Yes, yes. So it'll uh, talk to Creative Cloud. Uh, I think you get 20 gigs of storage uh, with your cloud membership. And so what's cool is, um, I'm not sure if this will work with my, um, with my Wi-Fi here, but um, what you would normally see is that um, synchronization is enabled. 
And so um, all of these files are going to be automatically synchronized with the cloud.